Hey there. Welcome to Hobie on YouTube. Kind of sounds like I need something else in there, right? Like, uh, hey there. Welcome to Hobie on YouTube. Where all your cutlery dreams come true. <laughs> as long as you dream of nothing but Swiss Army knives and old Scout camp knives. I've got something really special this time around. As you can see there, I've got three humpback camp knives on the table, but I'm betting one of them you have never seen before, and um, you may have never even heard of it. So this is the knife I'm speaking of, and uh, I'll give you some hints as to what it is. First of all, it's made in the USA, but it's not a Remington, and it's not a Camillus. And uh, second, it's very old. It's pre-World War II. So before I tell you more, uh, let me just talk about this six-bladed utility humpback frame, the humpback camper model, if you will. And I want to first show you this Remington because Remington really was kind of the granddaddy of this specific pattern. Um, Remington came out with this R3843 back in 1923 uh, or thereabouts and they produced this knife I think up until about 1939 when they sold their cutlery business um, to PAL. Um, so Remington may have been first with this specific humpback camper knife pattern um, but Boker is probably best known for it and uh, they've made this knife for a very long time, still make it today and uh, other German knife makers, many have made this knife so I, I really kind of associate this utility knife, this humpback six-bladed utility knife pattern with German knife makers. Um, but Remington, a US knife maker, may have been first. Um, I also know of Camillus uh, in more modern times, Camillus in 2006, I'm sorry, uh, 1996, made a replica of the Remington R3843 and called it the Trail Hand. And they also, I guess since they tooled up to do that replica, they also sold that same knife uh, in black plastic handles and called, it was part of their Bandit series. And I don't have either one of those to show you, but uh, if you'll go over to Joe's channel, Messer HQ, and uh, check out this video you see on the screen, he has a good example and a great video on both the Remington Trail Hand from 1996 and uh, their Bandit. But recently when I was speaking with or corresponding with Neil Punchert, who's one of the co-authors of the Boker book, uh, I asked him, I said, do you know of any other U.S. manufacturers of this pattern other than Remington and then more recently Camillus? And he said, Ulster. And uh, so I was thrilled recently to get this Ulster humpback camper. And uh, I'll tell you just real quickly how I got it. This was part of the lot that John Reese won on auction out of Britain. And when John asked me if there were any of those scout knives in there I'd be interested in, uh, I spotted this one and I said, I added it to my list. I said, yeah, I'm keen on that one. Uh, initially, he decided to keep it, which was fine. He, he offered up to me many other fine, fine knives. Um, but then I recently refurbished an old Victorinox um, early Spartan for him. Uh, he actually... I kind of traded my labor to him for this knife, I guess you could say, even though he had actually already put this in the mail to me and then said, what do I owe you for the refurb? That's what a great guy he is. So thank you, John. I'm thrilled to have this knife. I have no idea what these are worth. I can say that uh, this is the first one I've ever had in hand, and uh, I've never seen any of them listed on eBay or anywhere else on the internet, and uh, I can't really even find any pictures of them. So. Uh, the only way I knew about this knife was that Neil Punchard mentioned Ulster had made one, and now I'm lucky enough to, to own one. So here's a little information on Ulster, and uh, forgive me, I'll be reading my notes, because honestly, if you know this kind of stuff off the top of your head, you really need to get out in the sunshine more often. Um, 
So Ulster was started in 1876 by Dwight Devine. He had acquired the failed Ellenville Cutlery, Ellenville Cooperative Cutlery Company, which was formed by a group of Sheffield Cutlers in 1871 in Ellenville, New York. So just, you know, four or five years later, Dwight Devine bought the company and renamed it Ulster. Um, he continued to run it until his death in 1933, when his sons Charles and John took over. Um, they sold it in 1941 to Albert and Henry Bear, uh, and it later became part of the Imperial Knife Associated Companies. I think the last time the Ulster name was used was back in like 1972. But it was really one of the older U.S. cutlery companies, and so it's pretty popular with collectors. Okay, let's take a closer look at the knife itself. It's 3 and 5 eighths inches in the closed position. Nickel-silver bolsters, they are lined. A permanently attached bail. Ulster had a really nice bail at this point in time. It's rounded on the outside, but flat on the inside. It makes for a nice shape, nice sturdy bail. Four brass pins visible here through a smooth black plastic scale. This is celluloid, the dreaded celluloid, so I won't be putting this knife in a case with my other knives. But it's funny how some old celluloid handles are just absolutely fine and others shrink and crack and disintegrate. So this is a standard six blade utility knife with the corkscrew and the punch here on the back side. Um, it does have carbon blade tools and springs, brass liners and a divider. Here's something interesting about the construction of this knife that I noticed. Um, you can see it's cut all the way through here for the back tools. And that's different than both Remingtons and Bokers. Uh, here's a Boker so I can show you what I'm talking about. Um, see how the brass divider there runs the length of the knife and is not cut out, uh, nor is the uh, back scale. So that might make for a stronger construction, but I think one way Ulster compensated for that is they used a very thick brass divider here. And another difference that I noticed is that on both the Remington and the Boker, there's an extra brass piece here uh, that tapers away. Maybe you can see that. So the knife is a little thicker here on this end than it is this end. And with the Ulster, uh, it's thicker and the same width the length of the knife. More like modern Boker Camp knives. There's really strong spring tension on these back tools, which is good because you don't want them closing when you're using them. Uh, it looks like a European style three sided awl here, but it is hollowed here on this side, more like your traditional scout knives, so you have a sharp edge. And uh, the, the knife is in really good shape. There's really nothing wrong with it except the tip of the awl here is just a little, little tipped. Here's the main blade. It's a big spear point blade with a crescent nail nick. And the tank stamp is Ulster. Dwight Devine and Sons. So um, not all of Ulster's pre-1941 knives have that stamp, at least not all the Scout knives. So I was thrilled to see that on this knife. It was just kind of a little extra, like a little Easter egg there. And it makes it really easy to uh, predate the knife to 1941 when Ulster was sold uh, to the Bears and uh, obviously, at that point in time, they were no longer going to use the Dwight Divine and Son stamp. The bail is on this end. Uh, a lot of other humpback camp knives will have uh, the bail up at the front, so I guess technically that would be a clevis. 
Uh, I like it at the front because you don't have any risk of shutting your blade on the on the bail. But here we see it on the back and it is off-centered. Here is a long screwdriver cap lifter. That also helps state the knife. I'll talk about that in a second. And it also has a tang stamp. Ulster Knife Company. After 1941, that became Ulster Knife USA or Ulster Knife Company USA. I don't remember exactly which. And here's Ulster's three-piece can opener. And it's three pieces because you have a base here, uh, the jaws, and then an attached knob to lift it. And then the other tool on top is a smaller secondary blade. It's a clip blade. I just love the shape of this blade. It's big for a secondary blade and it's got a nice clip and a nice belly. And it has a long nail pull. And it also has the uh, Ulster Knife Company stamp. I'll date this knife somewhere between 1926 and 1941 uh, because 1941 because of the Dwight Divine and Sons tang stamp. Uh, but after 1926 because of some of the tools and I'm going off of the two Ulster Scout knives that I have. Their very first official Boy Scout of America knife uh, they came out with in 1923. And it had a short stubby screwdriver no lines on the bolsters, a one-piece can opener, uh, and a long nail pull. It also had a little different bail. But by 1926, on their scout knives, uh, they had started putting lines on the bolsters, like the humpback camp knife, a long screwdriver cap lifter, like the camp knife, the three-piece can opener, uh, a blade with a crescent nail nick, and uh, that bail that's flat on the inside. So all those features are very much like the features on the humpback camp knife that I just showed you. So I think this knife is uh, somewhere in that range and uh, actually I actually have shown this knife to Neil Puncher, and he's been very generous uh, with information. He's uh, got a big uh, volume of Ulster information dating all the way back to the 1800s, and he says that the only place that he sees this knife is from a 1936 catalog, and he shared an image of that with me, and I'll put it on the screen now. So there you can see this knife. Uh, it's exactly the same with the black celluloid scales, but it does not have a bail. And there you can see the model number is um, 6585H. And Neil tells me that the H with, uh, well, he tells me a couple things about Ulster model numbers that I didn't know. First of all, the, the first digit indicates the number of blades, six, so six blades. Uh, the next digits will be the model number 585 and then any letters thereafter would be colors of the celluloid scales with the um, H indicating black celluloid. Now this knife does have a model number on the back and it's actually 6585HR and I'm guessing that the R might mean that uh, it has a bail I know that Case uh, did that. They would say R at the end of their model number to indicate a bail. And that kind of makes sense because the uh, picture in the catalog image does not have a bail and does not have the R. But we're not sure about that. Finally, I'd like to add that I have now seen a picture of another one of these, and it had staghorn scales. So I now know you could get these uh, at least in black celluloid and stag handles. And I'm guessing they also probably made them in jig bone as well. So thanks for discovering along with me a humpback camper by another early U.S. knife maker, Ulster.
Hey, stay tuned to the channel because I have a lot of great things coming up. I appreciate you all, and as always, thanks for watching.